Um, but I can't see your videos for some reason. Yes, we can't see yours either. We all hear your voice. Now. And you can see it, but your videos are not coming through. Okay, there they are. Ah. They came up. Okay. Okay. Hi, Gio. Hi, Painada. Pa Painada. Painada, yes. Yeah, Karen. Thank you, Brett. Welcome. And others, I don't see, if I don't see a video, I probably don't, um, I don't see your names because my Zoom is only set up to see uh, people who got the videos on. Milan, welcome. Martha, good to see you. Yeah. So friends, I'm, I, I've prayed that this uh, lesson, this first lesson goes in spirit because, you know, we're living beings and to go like, you know, like I went on a Vasto training now. It was 80 hours of everything this man collected in his lifetime, you know, and I really felt that like 40%, 50% of information I was sleeping, but like really like knocking me out because I didn't feel it was an essence of really like, you know, the, some of these new age ideas also, you know, that like sometimes they're not sometimes, there's a lot of the times they're quite fake. And then you feel them. It sounds like wisdom, but like words wise, but on feeling base, you feel like, this information is not true. Something is not resonating. So I'm going to, I've got three acts of notes that I made at the Vasto training, and I'm going to get them typed out into really key things that you guys need to know. But today I'd like to go in spirit and I'd like to obviously brief you on the course, uh, which we can do later. And I'd like to just go through my presentation of what I've been up to and maybe just knock out some, uh, you know, uh, beliefs about um, like what homes should be like and, you know, and give you some, because the whole course is recorded. So these are just the sessions to support you, to to connect with you. And the whole course is online. It's very, very deep. And I'll show you the platform and I'll show you where how you're going to find everything uh so it's 12 weeks and we'll we'll get into the, the nitty-gritty of the course just now so just take a deep breath and connect with your heart center let's take three deep breaths and yeah we can do just connect with your breath we can do one or more whatever sound comes up from you Okay, on an inhale. <clears throat> oh, hey. So what can I tell you about bioarchitecture? It's been a long journey for me um, from position of the, like 2007, I went on to, into, um, you know, Mexico and started building, uh, well, learned how to build with ferro cement. But even if I go a little bit before that, uh, I guess I'll just fly through my presentation quickly just to, uh, get you guys going and at the same time we'll speak about different materials because th they're really all mm, very different um a sec yeah okay it's a crown okay can you see this Yes. Yeah. So up until um up until so you can see this first picture and the second picture you can see, yeah? Yeah. Yep. So so this is the dream to create an oasis 
but at the same time make it as a um a space where children can learn uh and at the same time make it so it's not gonna just take all our energy to look after this thing because you know um homes if if not thought through can really take a lot of energy so we want to make it easy fun exciting so maybe for now just switch off your microphones um yeah so my, my history I, i'm, I'm gonna go really uh, it's not a try to show off or anything just to show you where i came from to this so this was really back in 2000 i started with uh, little uv decorations um clubs parties ultraviolet wool 17 colors of uv trading at the markets making dream catches club decor um, starting to make little forms uh, decorating large events uh starting to play with uh, um like st skeletal structures in the in the fabric yeah and then at the, about the 2007 we started experimenting by spraying Ah, this natural material one, it's a gypsum type of stuff onto this fabric and we were able to solidify it. And then at that same time, I, I flew to Mexico. Um, yeah, I'm just going to fly through this. Uh, yeah, so little architectural forms, sacred geometry with spandex. Um, yeah, and then, and then all of this kind of fueled the bar architecture. Um, did a bit of sacred geometry drawings. Um, also haven't drawn for a while, would like to get back into it, but at the same time, a person always finds time on what's important to him. So obviously if I haven't found time on this, it hasn't been important for me, but it, 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 it's good. It's good. Uh, so I use this little tracing. I made a whole bunch of shapes and I can send them to you. If, if there is a request, just send me a message in the group. Uh, this like white lines and then I use tracing paper over them. And this is pencil. I just ran through a Photoshop paint filter. So you can see how I found these little forms out of these things. Um, and obviously it didn't stop on the sacred geometry. There's t-shirt design, there's flying things and um, moving into bar architecture, 2011, designing a school with classrooms and, and uh, little labyrinth. Uh, <clears throat> and back about then, I, I rediscovered Cal Earth because I needed a way um, to make these shapes, this, you know, because obviously br bricks just couldn't do it for me. Uh, this is a, a, a this is um inspired by American product called Garden Tower, um, and really deep honor to Americans for their creativity, ingenuity. Um, yeah, basically it's a warm thing inside, and they we and uh, you know. So I made a prototype. I made a three D render. Three D render was done in the same program. I'm going to be teaching you in Rhino three D. But it all starts with paper. It really does all start with paper. There's a top view of this uh, worm tower. So very much inspired by Victor Schauberger and spirals and vortices. Uh, this is a bit of pencil work in one of the lessons I'll teach you how to do the shading. It's very simple. You know, you flow with your hand like 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 this and you just color in. Yeah, but in one of the lessons I explain it. Anyway, a worm tower. So where we get to our homes to be also easy, these gardens is this, for example, drip irrigation, automatic that you just, you know, there is a timer. Although timer did break, I did have to mention possibly instead of a timer could be a, a, a water drum that's high up that just you open up and it just, you know, just, just, just drips, you know, that uh, from the water tower. Um <clears throat> Again, it all depends on temperature. I don't want to overload you because if it's a uh, warm climate, then you can have a water tank six meter high. Um, if it's cold climate, then you can't. So this is, um, uh, you know, yeah, it needs to be insulated. So this is about 2011. I was on the land, bought seven hectares, and I'm drawing this, uh, what looks like a geodesic dome, a base for geodesic dome. And this is, I'm mean, already discovering Nadir Khalili's color earth bags. So there's an oven, um oven uh russian bed with a with a mass heater you could call it the little table bathroom the composting toilet very much inspired by composting toilets um again it's not for so this is like back then the 3d design um okay uh yeah so this is uh, some homes are developed there's a bunker which will 
keep on coming back because I want to actually redesign this bunker and do it as a workshop style. Um, redesign it from a point of maybe we don't need to hide. You know, I did it for Americans. I thought that Russians were going to bomb them, but I don't want to prolong that fear-based mentality. <laughs> so we don't need to hide in the earth. Uh, you know, although it's nice to have a little earthen roof, but we need to move away from fear. But a lot of these homes, are obviously south-based, you know, uh, greenhouses. And one thing I learned from Vastu is that we cannot have all windows to the south and nothing to north, east, west. It's like eating and blocking your bum hole, <laughs> you know, because very important energies come from the, and I'll speak about from about Vast obviously in two lessons, a little overview today and a deep one next time. But the specific energies come from like the north. It comes very much uh, energy of financial abundance and spiritual um, connection. Um, I never knew that stuff, but I definitely resonated that we can't just have windows to the south. Mike Reynolds himself from Earthship Academy um, is, uh, uh, you know, has cancer and I wish him health, but the south windows are prone to high energy, high growth. So if you don't have any other windows, you kind of, you, you, you're not taking in spiritual energy, energy of wealth, but you're losing a lot of energy in the south. It's like, it's the energy of fire, Mars. But we'll, we'll touch on Vastu, but I'm just saying that when an Earthship typical design is, for me, not, uh, not a correct model anymore. Uh, the, look at the picture on the left at the bottom and top. So this is, uh, I'll show it to you just now. And there it is. I've built it. It was my first experiment with, uh, <clears throat> with the bags. A big flop here. I tried to build with bags with, by, not adding, by not adding any cement including the foundation rows and using just clay and the whole six rows just folded like this, this base for this just folded like cake. So you need, although they did say it in California, but it's the soil structure. So sandy soil, if it's sand, of course you can, but you know, do your foundation and then you can have obviously uh, without even, um, any stabilizer, but we'll speak about it separately. But I'm just going uh, like clay just folded on me, um, and it's all in the course. But clay needs lime if you've got a lot of clay, and sandy soil needs cement. But I don't need to make notes of this. It's all in the course. I'm just going. This was my fear-based living. I was getting ready for 2012, hiding under the earth. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, here I'm developing a gutter. Uh, just with some geotextile, this rebar, so you can, so some more thick wire or some uh, 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 thin rebar, for example, across, and then it created a little, you can't really see, but it created like a, an L, an edge here, uh, like, like this. So you can experiment with various methods. Um, I had a pig tractor here with my pigs, and it was really good until the one pig wanted to charge me, and uh yeah just got rid of the pigs it was just like you, you guys i think what i'm trying to say is by the way that's my first super adobe structure <laughs> there it is also big mistake there um and i'll get back to the pigs and animals and <clears throat> uh with a super adobe it's a very heavy material and um i when i got to the window it's important to follow the the, the shape the egg shape and if you don't, if you, I went a bit too straight. And then when I started finishing up this egg on top, it started pushing down. And I had to put a, a pole, a pole, because the whole ceiling was starting to collapse. So, but getting back to animals, and I'll teach all these correct methods of building, obviously. Um, you know, we'll touch on to it uh, in, in the theory that's pre-recorded. But getting back to the animals, you can't live your life according to what you think other people are doing that seems like it's cool. Like I lived my life thinking, no, Mike Reynolds, Earthships, I need to do like that, or, or that guru, or Jeff Lawton. You need to listen to your soul. You all have very unique talents, very unique uh, uh, history, very unique wishes, and you need to follow those wishes. I guess that that's the main message that I'm going to be uh, sending to you is that 
even you'll see like some of my stories and you'll see like this guy's chaotic. <laughs> he lived here, I got rid of this land, I got 15 bitcoins and I sold 15 bitcoins for a thousand dollars each, although the 60,000 now I think. You know, like it's just the next message I want to tell you is the state of being, how you feel inside your heart is very way more important than whatever you build. Everything I build, I lost. I lost 15 Bitcoins. I lost probably about a business worth of $3 million. I, I, I lost it all and I don't feel any sadness about it because I came to God. I came to my spirit. I came to this good state. I'm traveling now throughout the Caucasian mountain range. So it's amazing nature living exactly how I wanted, not even building anything for the first time since 2007. I'm having a break um, and I'm having the best time of my life, uh, really. Just uh, so what I want you to, um, I want you to take away everything you know about others, about what you think life should be, all the programs. And there's a prayer that we're gonna be doing separately in, on Sundays. <laughs> not the Sunday church, but, <laughs> but the prayer to get rid of that bullshit programs that we picked up from the collective that we think that our life needs to be like this because it's all bullshit. You need to follow your soul. But anyway, getting back to this picture, I'm still in my fear mode. I'm getting re ready for the end of the world. I've already redone six rows of bags, which folded on me by adding a bit of lime, obviously. We're putting a geodesic there with ferro cement so I could sit in it. And it could sit there. Um, yeah, I got all these domes, which Pacific Domes engineer from America came, taught us. We had 30, 30 domes that I was making in South Africa. Um, there's the water tower, by the way. Very cool. Very, if you're in a warmer climate, it's like one of the first things you do. A good water tower doesn't even need to be so high, but this high gives you pressure, obviously. Um, uh, like... We had a drop of land about maybe 10 meters, and that tower is about six or five. Uh, so you had one and a half bar of pressure uh, just by, you know, without any pumps. You just open the tap. And anyway, going back to fear mode, there's a buy diesel plant. I was getting ready for all of this. Buy diesel. You could get chip oil, and I could, you know, <laughs> make my own diesel. And also, like, just gave it all, or gave all the domes away, gave all this by diesel, and came to Russia with four suitcases, and that's it. Well, my solar system is is still there in my mom's garage. I'm not using it because electricity is so much cheaper than installing solar panels. I mean, I've got it. I'll I'll get it one day on my truck when I want to travel around. But it, like, electricity is so cheap here that it's like one doesn't need to have a solar system, although. I paid, uh, what, $20,000 for a really serious solar system. Outback, Australian Outback, because that's what Earthships use. Professional solar system. And uh, I use it for two years because I wasn't, I stopped paying for electricity bill. I stopped paying bank for the free man. You know, the free man, when you ask the bank, where's your, where, where's the, where, where's the document? You know, it was my original signature. They're like, they don't have it. So I didn't pay them for four years. So I've done all of it, like the solar, the free man. And I just decided that it's like, you know, it all has its place. Like, but I don't need a solar system here if I'm paying for electricity a hundred dollars a month here. You know what I mean? A solar system of $20,000 will pay off what in 20 years, in 20 years time, you need to replace the batteries and, 10 years, which is half of that price, and the uh, solar panels in 20 years. So I don't know. It's all relative. I'm just, all I'm trying to say is, uh, like, relax on all these ideas. Um, get, get, this is a donkey boiler, which uh, sends hot water to five showers. I was building a school of permaculture. Um, uh, there is the school. It was kitchen and everything, like a whole t workshop space. Uh, that's the sphere that I was showing you. That's the oven. The water was collecting from that gutter that I was showing you, remember, made of geotextile. Geotextile is a cloth that I just painted with this black tarry stuff over this rebar that was sticking out. You, you shaped it. Or you could do the same thing with ferro cement. I'm just looking at the overview. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm not trying to teach you how to do all these things right now. But... Um, it was a quick way to experiment with these crazy design ideas that I got inspired by from Victor Schauberger, from Nader Khalili, from all these guys. And, you know, 
I had a, such a plaster. I've even made a video called Plaster Disaster because uh, I plastered this entire home with clay, not enough sand, uh, and no stabilizer, I think. Or, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, there was cement there. And gosh, everything cracked. Not this outer layer. And then on this outer layer, I put cement and sand, okay? And then the inner layer was all this fat coat, the first coat, which went onto the bags, yeah? That was this clay and lime and whatever I've made in that mix. And the clay started to shrink. Biggest lesson, guys, here is please do test patches, especially with these natural materials, like sand, cement, stock standard, boom, it works, yeah? But if you're playing around, and obviously it's good to, to use natural materials because you can save yourself on like hundreds of bags of cement, literally. Um, not hundreds, on depends on the plaster, but still you can save yourself a lot of money if you use uh, natural materials. Like for example, in the bags of Super Adobe, you only use 8% cement, but you could get away with seven. I use uh, one to 10, you know, sometimes 10%. So in, you can do test patches, which is all in my dome course and, and so on. But what I'm trying to say is if you're doing plaster, please do test patches. Uh, like wherever, two by two foot and you do that, let them dry. I didn't do that. So I plastered inside and outside with this mix. And the next thing all started to crack and this outer layer cement started to crack with it because the inner base started to collapse under it. So, but it felt good when we we're plastering. <laughs> but a week later, all the water started to evaporate from clay. Uh, so yeah, you can do clay and I subsequently got an amazing plaster mix. It was, and it, you can find it in the books and I can send you those books as well. Um, but basically it was like three types of fiber, grass clippings, horse manure, uh, and all of these things are online, by the way. Um, and, and straw, which we chopped, yeah. Straw bales, which you chopped into little pieces. So three types of fibers. And, and then we got uh, uh, lime, sand, very important with the right quantity of sand because that's what makes clay not crack is the right quantity of sand, like I think 40%. And uh, I don't, yeah, I think that was that. Uh, but there's obviously a mixes online and there is proper things for plaster. And that worked, it like solid. It couldn't pull apart, no cracks, nothing, a really good plaster. And with three types of fiber, that thing is like incredible. Um, yeah, so then I went and I learned with Mike Reynolds first time in 2011 uh, when I went to America. And then he came to Africa and we built this whole uh, uh, like space, uh, believe it or not, a bank. But a bank, a library <laughs> and a few rooms for school, which was all in this one building, like the flower design. Uh, you know, it's like I think it was eight vaults that are going up and around in the flower shape, these vaults. That was from the lesson in 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 America in Mexico, ferrocement, lots of rebar, lots of strong sand, lots of mesh, and that's at Cal Earth. Um, and of course, you know, uh, and then I started experimenting. That's my teacher in Mexico, and then I went and I built this uh, a seashell, uh, which was quite interesting. Nine, eleven by six and a half meters. Uh, build a strong wall. I had such a disaster in my in my garden. Uh, uh, my toilet water, garden, uh, city sewer started flowing from my toilet. That's the first problem. Just started overflowing. It, it One meter, three feet high, just covered my floor with shit. City shit. <laughs> Not even my shit. <laughs> because this river that I bought my house, a 25-year bond with the bank, this river, because it was so beautiful, because everywhere is build, build, build all these boxes and houses, and around the river is this lush jungle because you know it's a nature protected zone. They're not allowed to build close to the river. So I bought because of that, because in the city I felt like I'm in the middle of the jungle. But this river gave me so much trouble. The first one is the city pipe, city sewer pipe bend because the logs hit it when the logs fall down. And this, because my house is built lower. Then the, sewer, then the sewer pipe shit started flowing up. And that's why all this permaculture system started to come with all these wetlands I'll show you just now. The second problem is the river, which was a little trickle as they were building up the city and the hard surface runoff. I'm sure you heard of this word with, with when the paving, roofs, paving, 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 roads and roofs. And it's all that creates uh, hard surface runoff for the water that can't infiltrate into the soil. And this little trickle of a river became into a monster that 
went seven meters high, seven meters high. It flooded my whole garden and then got into my first floor. So I built this wall, uh, which worked. Yeah, I built all these ecosystems for, to stop to treat my gray water separately, my sewage separately, and my kitchen water separately. Uh, kitchen water went into through a grease trap, and it's in my water course, but just uh, overall. Grease trap, just a box that catches bits and bobs from the kitchen, like a net, and then that clean water goes into this trench that dug up, and the trench had a whole bunch of logs, yeah, and it was level. And it had a pipe, like a 32 millimeter pipe with holes drilled uh, at 45 degree like this. Reason, so nothing gets blocks into those holes. Like, I don't know, how uh, one eighth of an inch or uh, eight millimeters or so. You know, uh, it's all in that water course. And basically that water just dripped in evenly into this trench and, and irrigated that bunch of stuff just from the kitchen, just by gravity, just by you uh, dumping that kitchen water. And that grease trap ba basket needed to be emptied out, obviously. But it's in the water course. Um, um, this was also a mistake. This was trying to treat the pool water with these thin pipes, didn't work. In fact, this entire wetland didn't work for the pool. Uh, too thin. I made three wetlands for the pool and the first two didn't work. This is a second one. These pipes are also changed to 110 millimeter with geotextile, those uh, uh, French drain pipes. Uh, I'll show you which one. So lots of bag work with, uh, with this, but it was like, you know, it was like eight workers and I was just drawing with a pick. Uh, with the, using a pig drawing on the ground, which I also show in the dome and water course, and then they were and they were just building it together with them. Um, got a sacred geometrical even paving poured for me, so I really I spent so much money on this project, and I walked out of this house after twelve years of payment to the bank. It was COVID, I couldn't sell it, and I just walked out. Like I walked out, guys. I took my solar panels. I took a couple of pumps off everything I'm showing, donated it to a permaculture school, and I fucking walked out. And I came to Russia with four suitcases, and it was so difficult. I was my my ego was freaking out. I was freaking out. I I was making a million dollars in 2007, and four months ago I'm sitting with one dollar in my four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> a week ago and sitting with a, a few dollars in my account but so much love then i basically broke out of fear of money completely now completely uh, i i i went into my bank account zero two days ago because some a friend helped me with just a little bit of process work with some doing some christ work christ consciousness jesus christ yes uh, but it's not jesus christ from religion it's christ consciousness that you download into like an operating system but it's a whole separate thing i don't want to you know it's not this lecture is not about that but basically i emptied out my bank account guess what yesterday uh 400 dollars no 300 dollars drew miraculously on my bitcoin account like that out of thin air so i don't want to get into it right now but this is the magic i'm working in right now with with god about two hours of prayer a day and love pouring from my heart just love just good energy it's the most important thing that you can take from this course that everything you see now all these pictures are built from um having this knot in my chest like this this panic attack anxiety shaking legs fear like ah you know and I'm showing you beautiful things, and I'm, but I'm not going to lie to you. All of the stuff, I lost it because it wasn't built from love. It was built from, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like I tried to live in, even in this dome, I couldn't live because, you know, like as, as, as romantic as it looks, it's dome. Dome is good for an art space. It's good for a play space for kids. Yeah. But it's not a good space to sleep because you it's like it's and they explained it in Vastu. You need a rectangular space, um, not a box, maybe like a vault or something, yeah, a vault. But you need these square rooms because they the the way the, there's a wavelength and they like uh they bounce against each other. And if they if they're in alliance with correct size, there is a standing wave that happens. So a full wave, a full wave, yeah. 
and then they get into sync with each other. That's where sacred geometry comes in, but we'll touch on to it later uh, in next lesson, I believe. But uh, so yeah, there was, that water tank was underneath this this, this dome, um, 40,000 liters. I didn't even launch it, by the way. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and then I built a dome on top of it uh, during a workshop, a two-week workshop. So the acreage goes up pretty quickly. It didn't need, in South Africa, where temperature is minus five Celsius in, in winter, at night, it, it didn't need like uh, aircon in summer. It didn't need heating in winter, except for a little Mexican fireplace. But it was under a big mulberry tree. So acreage is light, quick to build. So if you if you want something, a quick space, acreage is really really cool. But I'll show you even something different. So you can combine. That's why with that bunker design is so cool because it has a vault and it has two domes. Um, like a bathroom and a, and a little you know sleeping spot or something or, or or play space. One of my students from India built this dome just by watching the dome course, which is quite cool. He never visited me. Also, like I think I don't know, it's like less than three thousand dollars. He built the whole dome. Um, <clears throat> the dome guy teaches you to make these bricks, and you can. But I find like right now, I'd rather purchase the bricks. For it's foam creed, they're much stronger. So, uh, because making them is just, uh, yeah, it, it, it all depends on your situation. But, uh, you know, um, that's a sandbag. So that's a second repeat of the workshop in Nepal. Sandbag dome, I made a huge window. Uh, 1.2 high meters, so four few foot high, three foot wide. And for a sandbag dome of such a small size, this is a too much of a big window. Yeah. So that's why the buttress came up. The buttress came up. And I speak about it in the pre recorded course. I'll get, uh, you'll have that theory. But that's very important. The buttress is what keeps the dome from flopping forward. Yeah. Um, uh, a crete is way more forgiving for very big openings, like very big openings. Although you can do big openings in the in the sandbag dome, but they need to be more like thought through with proper buttressing and so on. Uh, a crete is very forgiving, but although this little thing is also a buttress for it. Uh, although I see in dome guy, they just make a little cutout with no buttress and it seems to be standing still for them, but they might be throwing a few rings of rebar, which... You know, I'm not sure of how they do it, but I did see domes with uh, probably ferro-cemented little, uh, you know, the full thing is ferro-cemented inside just to make sure that it doesn't pop forward, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so that's all the wetlands. That's that wall. That's the pool I made, uh, 100,000 liter. It was chlorine. And then I changed from chlorine to this natural pool. It, it was amazing. It was really, really clean water. So that's the third filter. That worked. The first two filters didn't work. It's all in the water course. The first filter, the second, why it didn't work? In the first filter, I tried to push water. Second one, I also tried to push water. And in the third one, I the water overflowed. This one, the bottom. The water overflowed through from the pool, yeah? And it sunk down, and all this complex system of pipes collected it from the bottom, got it to one point to a pump, and the pump... It didn't suck it because the pump was in the water as well. It just pushed it back into the pool, and that was creating that continuous thing. So the so I wasn't pushing the water through the wetland. Uh, I why those didn't work? They work for the gray water because the gray water just comes through, and naturally, and it just you know it goes down there. Uh, so so wetlands are different for pool treatment. Is a different wetland. For gray water, like this, this wetland would be working for gray water really well. So I use an Earthship model, but it didn't work for the pool. Also, the volume of water for the pool needs to be much higher, much higher. I think two or three times, two two times at least, the entire pool has to change over in a day. So the type of pump that's used for this pool is high flow, low pressure. It just like this water comes out, but it doesn't come out like with a it doesn't throw it far. You can see it. It just comes out like this. Two of these pipes, two 50 millimeter pipes just pushes out, but not far, not, not high pressure, low pressure, but high volume. So it's very important. Yeah. Not a big pump, just a thing this size. Not expensive also. That's in Mexico, uh, Brazil, Brazil. Uh, I used the Vesica Pisces design. The mistake I made there 
um, you see this whole vault, uh, the back of the vault, uh, that rounded part, I was going to do in acrete. And we started doing it from acrete. I'll show you just now. And the, the vault itself, here, let me show you. Th there we go. You see, I started doing the back part with acrete. And uh, this this thing was supposed to be you know, ferro cement, yeah. And then there's this dome that's leaning onto it. Now, the first biggest mistake I made in design, okay, I made this design and like, okay, cool, let's go. But if you look at it carefully, uh, I didn't study a side view. Look at my mouse. I didn't look study the side view of a cut right through the middle. So if you take this from the middle of the vault from this point right through to the middle of there, a cut, a slice. Because if I seen that, I would have seen that the sandbag dome is leaning onto acrete. And sandbag is very heavy, correct? Acrete is very light. So you can't have a sandbag dome, something that's super, you can have acrete leaning onto the dome, but you can't have an, uh, um, um, a sandbag, the, the mass, or uh, leaning onto acrete, because acrete will just fold. It's like foam, soft. Yeah. So what we had to do, look, there's only like three rows or something here of bags. We had to, we, we had to now do extra, look how many rows. <laughs> we had to do an extra six, seven rows just to lift the whole thing up. So the vault could get to the, to the point where the sandbag is not leaning onto, um, can you see? So the sandbag is not leaning onto acre. Can you see here? There's the acrete blocks. The second mistake I made, you shouldn't try and make one roof from two different materials. So here, make, mixing acrete and a ferro cement, trying to get them all to come even is close to impossible. So what they did subsequently is they made the whole thing from ferro cement eventually. Okay. Or if you have, if you live next to Brazil, like Mexico, Mexico, there's amazing masons there uh, th that could do the whole vault for you out of bricks, like normal clay bricks or acrete bricks, any bricks. Yeah. Another thing that can be done is uh, um, you must understand that from uh, from acrete you can do a sphere like a, a soap bubble, but you can't do a soap bubble from sandbags. Sandbags have to be like a catenary arch, which we show you. It's catenary arches like this, Egyptian arch or catenary arch. It's also in the theory in future, but you, because if you try and do a soap bubble out of sandbags, what happens is in these top rows, the sandbags will fall through. Do you understand? It's too much of a step. When there's like this, the sandbags uh, fit in nicely. Uh, here, can you see? They step in. They step in quite a bit, but so bubble wouldn't work. So, uh, so, but you can do an egg from acrete as well. Here, we're doing an egg. Um, look at that. So, but you, so from bricks, you can do an egg and half a sphere, uh, but from bags, you can only do an egg. Okay, so that's this whole thing plastered. Uh, I still haven't got pictures from the um, from the client. From you know, another uh, look at that that little curve here. That's a buttress. You see, I made a opening. So all of this is done without an architectural background, without an architectural uh, degree in university, and without an engineer's uh, um, background or even knowledge. It's just made with a few tips that I'll be teaching you throughout the course, uh, which I learned from Nigel Khalili, who is an architect, <laughs> which I learned from Mike Reynolds, who is an architect, and from the Mexican, another, uh, 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 well, he's not Mexican, he's American, Steve Kochler in, 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 in Mexico, the ferro cement guy. There's just few simple principles that you use, and such as, you know, catenary shapes, you know, catenary is uh, if you take a chain upside down, it hangs. If you flip it over, that shape is self-supporting and buttressing. Um, curves are very amazing because if you make a straight wall, like when I showed you that brick wall, I mean, when I showed you that wall that I made for the river, people build straight brick walls and I just see them, the river just washes them away. 
breaks them and washes them. So many brick walls that just see big blocks of bricks, chunks flowing along the river. They're all being broken down and my wall is standing because it plays with the river. So these curvy shapes, uh, there's a, the, the, you know, they're very strong. As soon as you make like a snake or a curve, it stands by itself. If you make a straight wall, you need to have something that supports it. So find a good balance of um, straight and curves. Like here, I've made a big mistake. <laughs> a big mistake. I made curvy walls um, and I made and I put a straight roof. Uh, I, I don't think I have more pictures, but you've, I'm sure you've seen quite a few videos, but these walls go like curves. The reason I made curvy walls is because I thought I was going to do this vault over it. The vault, the shallow vault pushes a hell of a lot sideways pressure and curvy wall would counterbalance that pressure. But uh, my, my ex-wife said to me, no, this is too low. So I made those arches and I put them like that into this A-frame type of thing. And obviously for that, I didn't need the curve wall. The problem was the curves. Some curves were sticking out and the snow would fall down on them. And I didn't have it them waterproofed or plastered by the time winter came because I didn't have money at the time. Anyway, the snow would melt because the wall is warm and it got the water got into the wall and it got moldy. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, good foundations are very important uh, to raise this wall off because I made a, a foundation also from bag, um, but the sand is very hydroscopic. It just pulls water in. So it's very important to waterproof it properly and to put it on good foundation that's off the ground. And obviously not to have water. It has to be waterproofed. And I teach it in the dome course how to waterproof these uh, sandbags as I've been taught in California. But in essence, it's uh, you cut same, uh, not these bags, but you cut either geotech style, two by two foot um, or bigger pieces. It's all in the course. And then you impregnate them with this tarry black stuff. And then you basically, you know, you smear it on. A dome happens with little diamond pieces. But it's in a dome course. You basically do little diamond pieces like pineapple. And the whole thing is like black. And when it's drying, you throw sand into it. And the sand gets stuck into the tar. And then that's a key for the final plaster. I'm just giving you a bit of bits and bobs. But just so you can, you know, be aware of these things. Because I don't want you to make those mistakes. But it's in the dome course, in the water course. I waterproofed the tank. The water tank worked, by the way. Uh, 14,000 liters, it kept it. Um, let me show you. So Because the 40,000 liter I showed you didn't work. Well, I, it did work. I didn't launch it. But uh, this water tank. Oh, it's not even here. Gosh. Um, yeah, that water tank next to the home, it did It did work. Uh, I, I waterproofed it properly. 14,000 liters. So then all the mistakes I did in the... Oh, wait. The, the, then there is this home. This home is a bomber because we spend $1,000 on all the materials. You won't believe it. $1,000. Like this home cost me 10 grand. This home cost me $1,000 on all the materials. The windows didn't open except for the last one. So it's not even windows. It's the things that are inside the windows. What are the, they're triple glazed, triple glazed, but they're not uh, in the white frames as you see here. Yeah. Uh, all windows, by the way, here are secondhand, 10 times cheaper. Uh, this window is $50. This huge window, two by three meters plus minus, fifty dollars, fifty dollars, and it's triple glazed, guys, triple glazed. So get a. So what I'm trying to show you, the standard method of building would be that would design a home and that design a window shape for it, like where you're sitting right now, and then that order a window to that shape, correct, to that size. The way I do it is I look what's on uh, uh, secondhand uh, building sites. Yeah. And then I put my beam, I put my beam here at that height and a little bit extra. Do, do you see? And then, and then I, uh, and then I basically, um, I get away by using secondhand size. So all my windows cost me here, um, $400 for all the windows for this huge home here, <laughs> all the windows cost me, uh, $150. Okay, and one of the windows I used, and this is Siberia, so I'm not talking about some, this is minus 50 Celsius, minus 50 Fahrenheit, 
negative 50 Fahrenheit. And this home was plus four Celsius all winter long because it's a little submerged. It's a little submerged in the ground. Mistake again was made here. Um, French drain needed to have a French drain running. So I'm talking about this bottom one. Yeah. Needed to have French drain running with proper, I mean, you can check what French drain is, but basically a perforated pipe with a bit of gravel and whatever, you know, on both sides and at the back to make sure that the water is diverted away. And where this door is, a bit, we dug out, you can see a little bit here, we dug out, uh, you know, and then the water needs to go to sunlight. Sunlight meaning, so if you're on the slope, the water come, needs to come out and, you know, get out, yeah? Uh, so meaning, so any water that comes up in spring uh, from snow melt does not, uh, it, it flooded this floor. Some, so if it was a French drain, the water would have gone into, because you look, the clay is very dense, correct? Very, very dense. But the way it, re because there was no French drain, the, there's a big hole, the, the, the home, and the water just like, oh, here we go, and it just enters it. But if you have a French drain with gravel, uh, what happens is the water finds its way to this French drain, and because it's lower than the floor, it obviously goes in there first, and then it disappears out. So uh, remember that. Uh, but this is a home that was covered with turf. Uh, it was very temperature stable. It's cool uh, in summer. Although I actually shouldn't lie. Uh, you know, I wasn't there in summer next summer, so I can't actually lie to you about that. But I know that in winter it was plus four and they didn't even use a strong oven to to take it up to living temperature uh, for people to live. People overwintered. As soon as I finished building... I went back to my wife and our ex-wife and I, I asked her to I begged forgiveness and she accepted at me. The reason I went to this community is because I thought that a community was 5,000 people. This is two years ago. A community was 5,000 people would say it would be make me happy. Why did I go there? Again, the burning inside my chest, anxiety, panic attack, like everything is there. Money is there. My wife, uh, ex-wife is there, but I'm like so unhappy, depression, negative thoughts are hitting me in my head, like self-hate, all that other bullshit. And I pack up and I take my car and I leave and I go and visit, uh, not visit. <laughs> I thought I was going to live here. I even invited a girl from uh, a, a, you know, a website that I found. <laughs> she came to visit me from Anastasia website. Anyway, it's crazy. Uh, as soon as I finished building this home, I left the place and I ran back to my wife because of fear of loneliness, which is another thing that I've worked through right now, which is quite cool with the help of Christ, with the help of God. Um, anyway, so uh, this home, the top one, I just gave to my ex-wife. This home I left in the community. <laughs> so, and I could say I'm homeless now, but I'm traveling in a car, although I built so many homes. All the mistakes I made from the Gothic arch, I've put into this 12-page uh, um, blueprint. It's the first blueprint I've done, uh, I've done in Rhino. Uh, well, I've done ever. <laughs> so, I've, you know, I've done all the sizes. Because this home I built without any blueprint. I just built. And that's why there's so many mistakes like crazy mistakes, like too many mistakes. <laughs> so that's why I decided that you guys need to have a blueprint, even some basic, just some basic. You can at least see uh, like where's the insulation, you know, what size wood, what size insulation, membrane, uh, uh, finishing, you know, um, like everything needs to be aligned um, and proper. So this blueprint, uh, although the mistakes gave me wisdom to make a blueprint correctly, um, there's a rocket oven and this is not a correct rocket oven in the blueprint there's a proper oven which I had a zoom call with a guy who built a rocket oven and he will actually look at this blueprint maybe even just now um, but this is the dream again to create this oasis uh, because obviously in Russia we have six months of very cold weather and um, you know we need to create something that's <clears throat> temperature stable so that's uh, Mike Reynolds, his, his work, a double story, home, uh, oasis. It's very cool. It's very, very nice. Um, yeah, so not to go too deep, but basically it sucks in cold air. You open up a skylight and 
through this convection, it just pulls in cold air. The cold pipe is in this insulation because this berm is warm. Yeah, because the insulation is here, so the berm is warm. So, so this cold air does not um, heat up. It's in the insulation, and then it enters here. And then it gives back at, in, in, in the middle of the um, cold winter. But be that as it may, blocking windows from east, west, and south is just not nice. As, as, uh, uh, east, west, and north. Like north is a very important to have something. So maybe even have a large door or... or it's a separate conversation, but we need to have some openings from the from the from the north. That has to be balanced with the south. So the design is busy changing right now, and I'll show it to you. It's basically an octagon now. It's uh, changed into uh, wild style. I'm at it. Yeah, this is what I'm working with right now. This is based on bars too. A bit of rectangular rooms. A uh, bit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, rooms. I, and I'll show it to you. Throughout this next three months, I'll be working on this. So we'll have a lot of time still to explain this, but I'm just showing where I'm going with this. Um, but basically, I combined a few a few designs together, a greenhouse from Chinese greenhouse called like that, uh, which has a carpet and it covers the home uh, here. It co covers the greenhouse here. But also this depends on the climate. If you have winter, if you have sun all year round, you don't need to do all these things. You must remember that in Russia, where I'm living, not where I'm living, but where I'm designing it for Moscow, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg especially, five months of no sun, four months of no sun. It's overcast and it's very dark and it's only four hours of daylight and it's very, very dark and it's constantly overcast. So, you, you know, Canada is very different. He doesn't need to do this. You know, you can grow bananas because you've got sunlight all the time in Canada. Siberia, we also have a lot of sunlight in Altai, 360 days of sunlight a year. You know, uh, so it's a very different story. So you need to really look at your climatic conditions and and, and design according to that. <clears throat> That's Russell Finch. I'm not going to go into this too much, but basically they take hot air and they push it under the ground and they warm up the ground and this ground gives back, uh, uh, you know, when you need it uh, although i'm really excited about more natural systems this is south korean on on doll floor it um and through this floor guys i want to install the natural passive cooling which will take in cold air from the ground and i'm not talking about deep ground i'm not talking about some heat pumps and and, and those expensive things i'm talking about very rudimentary laws of physics which can take in cold air from uh, from the ground that will dig up with an excavator. And that design that I showed you now, that's what I'm going to be doing. So, and as well as the heat uh, using the same channels. And this we can do with bags. And guess what? Here, clay and preferably like high content of clay will work really well because fire bakes clay and clay becomes strong with fire. So you see, what didn't work in my foundation would work here. Um, but at the same time, it needs to be all made sure that it doesn't get wet. Uh, but I still use a bit of lime with clay so that it stabilizes. Anyway, this is on doll floor. Lots of designs. Again, there's some very simple designs with using uh, tanks. I want to just chat to you about these tanks. You know, if this is buried... When the tank is empty, the ground can collapse the tank, correctly, correct? Imploded. Because if the war, if you used up the water. Now, in uh, these IBC tanks, you know it has the, that 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 uh, cage around them. Yeah. If you use a mesh, if you use another like let's say what 15 by 15 centimeter mesh around it, you and, and then a smaller chicken wire mesh, you can use that to ferro cement it very very quickly very very quickly and easily and then your tank becomes obviously um not so it doesn't implode and on the top you'd maybe make a little a little dome not a high dome but a shallow dome that you'd connect you know across cross cross and across i mean i'm just giving you some ideas and if you've got questions i can draw it up for you if need be you know but yeah, so there's some new designs. Uh, uh, this is very outdated. This is the design we're going to be drawing in this course. Um, so you're going to draw this from start to finish during 12 weeks. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, why the vaults? Uh, because I'm going to show you what Cal Earth did with um, with a uh, form work. I'll get to it just now. And yeah, <clears throat> and we'll do a lot of about talk about a lot about this design in the future. So I don't want to stop on it right now. But that's it basically it's also buried. Yeah, it's buried up until that line. And it's got a compost pile at the back. All of this needs to be prototyped, needs to be tested. Uh, Jean Payne, uh, if you need his book, just, just remind me. Otherwise, sign up to the Alumni group and look through media. All these books are there. All these books that I'm talking about, all the books are there. All the amazing videos are there. Jean uh, Payne, P-A-I-N, uh, he made hot composting that gives you hot water for six months, three to six months. Um, yeah, so we want to tap into this biology of nature, but again, I'm not going to lie. I haven't prototyped a full design yet. I, you know, it's been this, that, and the other, and now the design is changing, but, uh, I want to prototype it obviously and, uh, see that it works, but maybe you guys will prototype it and it, it's an earth ship, but it's based on biogeometry. Biogeometry is this 45 degree angle, this 45 degree, this orange line. Yeah. What they've tested, and you can go to biogeometry.ca, Ibrahim Karim, biogeometry.ca uh, for Canada. And they did a test where they put, where they grew potato in Red Sea salt water. But before the salt water was activated by putting a wooden plate, a wooden thing with this 45 degree angle. Um, and... Uh, Just blowing out the candle. And um, the water just activated. And the potato grew in, in, in salt water from Red Seas, like the saltiest water in the world. So miracles happen there. It's like, you know, biogeometry is a big subject on its own. Uh, I, I studied with uh, biogeometry in, in Brussels. So I went to a live workshop. But... Um, what I want to, yeah, biogeometry is huge. Uh, what I want to take from biogeometry is obviously this, a few, okay, there is energy of shape. That's biogeometry, okay? It's like sacred geometry, but on a whole next level. Now, I want to combine it with Vastu and give you, uh, a, a, a give you, um, give you a design that, uh, uh Basically, what we want to create inside our homes is this uh, space like like in the forest, like you go into a beautiful nature spot. We want to create a power spot inside our home. This is what I'm trying to design. When you come into your home that you feel wholesome, good. But at the same time, I want you to make to understand that uh, if you do not have that love in your heart, no matter what home you build, you'll fuck it up <laughs> and you'll leave it. <laughs> you know, I, I've got to be honest with you. It's like uh, the, the the love from inside your heart is the most important one. And from this good space, that's where I'm going to be designing this new design. Um, so what I'm trying to say, not the community with 5,000 eco-conscious people are going to make you happy. Not the most amazing land in the most amazing pristine nature is going to make you happy because if you're in this pristine nature and you're all alone and you know because of our programs and all this other bullshit we divorced for the 50th time and we left all alone uh this most beautiful nature is not going to do it for you unless you're smoking pot every day to kind of like zen out you know but if you choose the path of clean clean you know uh clean uh without drugs and alcohol alcohol it's close to impossible because it uh, becomes very difficult because all your stuff comes up. And if you're out alone in nature, the inner voice is so loud because it's you and the stars and waterfalls, but like it's, it, it just becomes very difficult and your most amazing sacred geometrical home is not going to save you. That's what I'm trying to say. Although we're teaching how to build a home, how to design a home, you need to understand that this having love inside your heart is more important get that going rather than building a home. And then from this good space, you'll build a home that you need. Um, 
I know I'm going a bit all over, but it's something, some of these things nobody's going to tell you. They'll tell you, build my home and you'll be happy. You'll be off grid. Like Mike Reynolds, he doesn't tell you that he got cancer. He doesn't even know that he got cancer possibly because all his windows are facing south um, or something else. I don't know. You know, I can't claim, but uh, in vast training, they said that you get cancer or you get disease if all your windows are, on, are only south. But here the windows obviously, but southeast and southwest. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. All the homes that I've been, the home that we're going to be drawing, this is what we're going to come up with at the end. And this is one of our students. He just drew it with uh, a bit of pencils. The 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 this is also in Rhino. A bit of uh, physics behind it. Basically, right now we're going to be taking hot air or or or, or water from this. Um, parabolic dish at the bottom and sends it through the berm, yeah, uh, and then taking the hot air from the top of the greenhouse. By the way, double air greenhouse uh, because we want to keep this area inside so it's comfortable for the plants. And here we want to get it really hot with this black pipe. It's orange now, but it's black, going to be black. And then that that's going to be channeled, pushed through the berm and with this high uh, high, high chimney, it just, it will suck it out. Even if we have to start it with a little fan and then switch off the fan, it'll keep on sucking because it's higher. Um, but this new thing needs to be hot basically. And then we charge this berm with hot, uh, um, with hot air, uh, but needs to be prototyped. The design that uh, I got to was so difficult with all these pipes here, this one, so difficult that I had to go into virtual reality a program called Tilt Brush, and I planned out all the airflows because you draw live. It's very cool. So you can even, uh, you know, on these basic headsets now, you can even have Tilt Brush. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, designing shapes in, in live, and they also move um, air, water, whatever you want to design. It's quite good. So I rented out a system. You don't even need to buy it. I even bought an expensive computer so I could run VR. I didn't even use it once. And I just sold my expensive computer. And I have my Mac laptop that I'm running this through. But it was so complex, all these airflows that I had to go into virtual reality just to plan them out. Because there's winter air, cold air, stale air that you want to get out. Summer air, it's just, it's just crazy. But um, in essence, it has, uh, 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 like an Earthship, it has an insulative barrier and waterproofing, but it's much bigger berm. But I don't want to also overload you because of the design I'm going to be changing. Uh, angles of the sun, very important. What is it going to look like in June, the angle? What is it going to look like in May, September, October, March, February? So you'll, you'll understand that my sun in St. Petersburg, where I was, come in... February, when it finally comes out in February, when it's minus 30 Celsius, minus 20 Celsius, when it's really, really cold, then the sun comes out. Otherwise, it's all overcast. So in February, although Earthship takes its sunlight angle uh, at 22nd of December, 21st of December, uh, winter winter, sol winter solstice, yeah? What is it, winter? Yeah. Uh, I took my angle of the sun in mid-February, because that's when my sun comes up. <laughs> and that's Mike Reynolds who suggested it, yeah? And in mid-February, mid my sun was uh, 22 degrees in the middle of the day. And that's why all my roofs, vaults are 22 degrees. So the sunlight can come in all the way to the back of the room and, and, and get into the house. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't want to overload you with this, uh, but basically this is all the airflow that I... And this is two years ago. Um, basically, it comes in, it heats up from the greenhouse, it pushes down into through this blue barrel here. There it is, it's like a distribution box. Uh, there it is. Yeah. And then it sends it all through to the berm, to the underneath the floor, underneath the garden beds, uh, around the septic. Uh, and then what sucks it out is this long chimney. A chimney was like a torch behind and uh, um, polycarbonate in the front. Uh, so like like a torch, like a mirror. So it gets really, really hot. And this pipe is six meet, meters tall and it just will get very, very, very hot. So it'll create suction. But again, even if I have to pump connected with a fan, there is the fan. It's like this red little worm thing here. 
and the fan sits here and it kickstarts the whole process. There it is again, underneath the sauna. The sauna then there was uh, uh, with bricks, with acrid bricks, like a cylinder that was going to be that was going to be built. There it is, um, and that was going to be another zone with tropical plants. It's just I could say it's. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are going to be thought through once I build it, and I started building it. There it is. I drew it up on the gr on on the ground. I drew it up first on 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 three D program. Rhino will help us get all these sizes, by the way. Yeah, very cool. So you get all your points. Yeah, uh, and then you get all the sizes, and then these sizes get transferred onto the land, which is very important. Uh, these straight lines get pegged out, and then that's how you're able to draw it on the land. Once you got it drawn on the land, then you obviously can start building it. Um, this is another interesting concept. This little snake. This is a foundation for um, a, 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 poly, a, a plastic um, bag, but it's in a roll, like a sleeve, that goes on top of it. It was going to be blown up with a with a jumping castle blower, and then I was going to use a mesh, and I'll still do it uh, to make that ondol floor, the South Korean ondol floor that I can make. So use a, a mesh that you put over this blown up tube that sits on top of this foundation and the mesh you hammer to this foundation with nails, but this tube keeps on being blown up with this uh, jumping castle fan. And then the mesh, you come with a hopper and you spray it with a thin layer of cement and then a second layer and then a third layer. And then you have a channel that can take high temperature. You know what I'm saying? That can be buried, can take high temperature and at the same time, doesn't cost you an arm and a leg because otherwise what you would use, stainless steel pipes if you have to move all this air. So I'm obviously trying to explain about all these pipes, correct? So that was a way to do these pipes. Um, and if you're interested, well, I'll explain that separately. But what I'm trying to show you, even this tiny house, I, I ran away from this project. That's when I went to Siberia. I just couldn't. I was alone. I couldn't find anyone to help me uh, because I was so far out. I just wasn't in a good space. That's the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't in a good space in my heart. And I abandoned this project and I just ran away. There were flies biting me, lots of flies, like sets of flies and mosquitoes in the evening. It was just crazy. But I pounded all the tires alone. I, I put this chimney pipe, like like wherever I could find. The, the bo I started, I, go, I went for it, you know what I mean? But it was just for one guy, like it was just a disaster. I just, I just couldn't do it. So with sandbags, you got to get yourself some help. You got to get yourself some help because it's just more fun. It, it goes way quicker, way, way quicker. And, uh, you, you know, yeah. Just shows you even like your dream, it was abandoned. Like I just couldn't, couldn't finish it. Mm. So I'm more into public spaces now, though I'm trying to design a home for a blueprint. I, I, I want to design something like a school, like a, like a space for children to play and learn. That's what I'm into. So th there is this design. This is all in Rhino. So using a, this Russian oven and a Russian onion and then pushing it across so a polycarbonate, a six meter long polycarbonate like that. There's the composter again. So, um, yeah, this is this year. I've simplified the uh, heat exchanger. In Russia, we get this um, coils that are sold for wells that put these things into wells so the soil doesn't collapse. And then you obviously tap your water from a well. And <clears throat> you get them already ready-made. It's a pipe, but this thick, 75 millimeters, maybe three inches. And it's just glued together with like, not glue, but it's like melted together. Um, connected together and you get them ready made so this could be a good heat exchanger instead of all those crazy pipes that I was showing you earlier you remember in the berm now uh, I could get this hot air through this heat exchanger and that would be this is all behind this is all bermed up this would be soil uh, thermal mass yeah so that's like uh, uh, I could say it was a public pool space that was going to be here um, yeah that's inside it. Um, and this is a next design. This is using a geodesic. Again, tapping into the geometry of geodesic. Can you see how uh, there? Geometry of geodesic meaning <coughs> where it ends, where the two angles are here, here. So I just drew a line right across. 
So that means you don't have, you know, you basically use the geodesic shape, the right geodesic to get this formwork. And at the same time, not formwork, but the, the shape of the greenhouse, yeah? <clears throat> and at the same time, these are six meters, exactly six meters, Me because that's a standard size of polycarbonate either 12 meters or six meters, 18 foot or 32 feet long. So that's very important. You can't just design something out of your head. I mean, you can when you're sketching, but ultimately you want to get to the material size that you can get from the shop. Polycarbonate is, you can get it clear and you can get it um, obviously like not clear for the greenhouses. Um and it's pretty cheap at last. Remember, you need to look for good quality polycarbonate. Good quality polycarbonate, I was the other day in a 10-year-old, 10-year-old greenhouse, uh, which looked about like this, this shape. It was a 12-meter polycarbonate, by the way. This, I designed like a 6-meter polycarbonate, but if you look at the size, <laughs> obviously, it's about a, 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 AI redid this picture for me. But uh, this is looking like a 12-meter polycarbonate, which is also doable. Uh, yeah. Anyway, what I'm trying to show you is that you got to use shop uh, sizes of what you can find with minimal waste or no waste at all. Yeah. Um, again, two rooms there, a compost pile, <clears throat> a potential for if you don't have two rooms to have a little terrace here uh, that you can, with terraces, you can increase the space inside your greenhouse or you know obviously what was like let's say 20 square meters now becomes 20 square meters plus all of these extra spaces that you get vertical gardens that you can plant in here or you can have a terrace going down 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 so <clears throat> depends what you want to create and what i want to create now is a, a home that's a business you can either rent half of your home let's say and you live in the other like airbnb or you get a aquaculture farm where you can grow prawns, fish, and all of that shit from prawns and fish, uh, grow your food, and you can maybe even start a little restaurant. Imagine having two of these wings. One greenhouse comes up on this side, one greenhouse comes up on that side. On this side you live, on that side is your business, whether Airbnb or whether it's an aquaculture farm which you can generate income from. Again, you need to know what you love doing. Maybe it will be an art space for you. Maybe it will be a museum that you want to invite people over. Don't believe that. Oh, ac what I want you to think about is that you don't need to live from fear. If you've generated love from your heart, I just had $330 appear on my bank account yesterday. Just because you generate love and the reality starts folding accordingly to your feeling not the other way around the other way around i'm telling you i've lost it all <laughs> lost everything because i was in a panic attack fear mode um so do what you love love what you do and enjoy your life and i hope you can get to god or if you are with god already can definitely help you because can pull you out of really any dark situation because all of this before i thought i was god and i can do it without god i only came to god three months ago up until now show with uh, up until then i sh went without god completely anyway this is the design i thought i was going to do i started selling blueprints for this design i had about 10 people purchase and I thought, I thought, okay, out of all these designs that I showed you, I need to settle on something, one. So I just did a quick sketch, very quick. This is a couple of hours, obviously without detailing. And uh, there's the double uh, uh, greenhouse that I showed you. The one has an onion shape, can you see? And the inner one has this other type of shape. Um, it's just the way it works with the design for me, okay? Th there it is. There's the outer greenhouse. There is the inner greenhouse. Because it's so cold, maybe in your country, you don't need to have a double greenhouse because polycarbonate itself, polycarbonate itself can come in three layers, four layers, five layers, or even six layers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is designed like ultra cold Siberia, no sun, like very hectic. And plus I'm doing the double, uh, green, double greenhouse because I'm tapping these pipes because I want to get super high heat in between them so the plants don't bake. 
So this is still Earthship. Yes, I'm still talking Earthship. I'm still talking cells. That's the floor level. That's the pool. That's the garden bed. Um, again, you don't need a pool. Maybe if you're doing an aquaculture farm, the pool becomes where the shrimp live, the prawns live. The prawns, maybe you don't need to breed from small. You can buy them small already, very cheap, and you just dump them in and you chuck that whole process out of your life and you just buy them already tiny. And you know what I mean? You don't fuss with breeding prawns. You just purchase prawns, you get them to this size, and then you sell them at like a thousand times more than you bought. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? So again, do what you love, love what you do. But what I'm trying to say, that's that's what I meant by double wing. The one wing could be where you live, and the other wing could be, for example, your, your business or whatever, or your Airbnb or whatever. And I still, I really love this Russian shape, but, uh, you know, that's because I'm from Russia, but you might, you know, uh, love your geodesics, um, you know, so also like what you resonate with, you know, I think what I showed you, you can pull a shape out of a geodesic neatly, neatly, yeah, that's half a hexagon exactly, that's a full hexagon, that's a half a hexagon exactly, that's a full hexagon, that's a half a hexagon exactly. Or, or you can pull your shape out of uh, an onion. <laughs> there it is. So be creative. Be, be creative. And I'll, I'll show you this uh, plugin for Rhino. Just remind me also. It's called uh, Zonohedron. Maybe just write it down. Zonohedron. And you just uh, type it out. And then you just, these shapes, that just draw it up for you. That draws it up for you instantly. And you just play with different amount of spirals. Um um, and then whatever, and then you get like, you get the right onion that works for you or the right geodesic, it draws geodesics as well. Or you can always import uh, shapes out of um, internet and you can search for free ones as well, which I did. Um, anyway, so I, I don't want to go into cities, but yeah, communities, like that's where I went and lived for two months. That's where I built this vault. I thought it's all these people are going to save me. Anyway, they didn't. <laughs> I, Jacques Fresco, amazing. So when I use some of these ideas, Jacques Fresco also got some cool house designs, by the way. Very cool. If you look into these designs, you'll see uh, superb ing ingenuity. Um, because, like, again, half domes and 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 all of this, uh, these things that they get sunlight. Very cool designs. One should definitely look into his designs. Uh, a whole community. I don't want to go into it, but yeah, 120 hectares. I'll send you this presentation if you need. That's a cool way to uh, for something, anything. It, like, I'm doing this for community design on a flat land, on a flat land. So on 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 slope. I used the permaculture and I used all the roads on contour. But if you're on a flat land, um, then you you don't need contour lines. You can do something a bit more interesting, a bit more different. Uh, but basically, that's one hectare here. Four homes, four four homes, one uh, communal center that you can build, like your three D printers there. Like if we're if we're together and we're like four families of builders, for example. But maybe that's too idealistic. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, what I like about this is this Arca Scienti idea. I'll get back to Arca Scienti. But basically, you have a communal building space, you have a communal garden, you have four homes, and you have one. Um, a space that heat a heater that, that like a boiler that heats up all the four homes together. That's something to maybe to look at, um, because typically what happens now you'll build your home and you have to deal with all your heating and cooling for your home. But imagine you have one system that can send hot water, for example, through four to four homes. S size wise, hexagon is twenty five meters, a square is fifteen meters, and twelve pointed shape is fifty four meters. Yeah, and then you can have this infinitely. Um, here's an Earthship type of uh, flat design. Um, anyway, I don't want to overload you with this because it's not what the course is about, but the blocks of flats would be here. You couldn't even have the blocks of flats. The blocks of flats, uh, that's my design for block of flats. That's something in Canada they build. Um, uh, Habitat 67, I think. That's in China. Uh, architect is... Um, Moshe Savdi, Moshe Savdi Architects, amazing. Anyway, um, yeah, even flats can be interestingly designed with plants. 
uh, new materials, uh, um, 50-year warranty called ETFE liner. ETFE, 50-year warranty on it or 50-year lifespan. Amazing projects can be built with it. Gigantic. Obviously, the entire Eden project was built with it um, in, in Cornwall, England. <clears throat> Uh, I love this because uh, they use this amazing method, another new method called silt casting. Uh, the the dig up shapes in the ground. I'll show you now. The dig up shapes in the ground, the sand, and then the pour cement into this uh, um, into this uh, uh, into yeah the pour cement and sand in, and get these shapes. And then they use the small crane that they purchase themselves. These are like students like me and you, and they just put these gigantic vaults and domes together with a little crane. Uh, so it's very possible. And because there's a self-supporting shape, they lean onto each other. Like big, big bricks, basically, giant bricks. Um, there it is. And they make bells there. Arco Science, who hasn't been in America, highly recommended. Uh, very cool. They, they try to build a new type of a city. I like it because, uh, because not everybody wants to live on a hectare. Okay, hectare is a very, it's a lot. Even an acre is a lot. It, a, typically, a person who doesn't like gardening too much, like one-tenth of a hectare is more than enough for them. One-tenth of a hectare. You can grow so much food on one-tenth of a hectare that you, you won't eat it all. You'll, you'll be selling it and giving it away. So, um, yeah, so just all your ideas about how much land you need, throw them into the source <laughs> okay um it's nice to have big land and you can have neighbors further away but you know i don't know i'm just rethinking all of this uh, homesteading i don't want to sit on one land forever it's just i i don't for me i don't I, that's not what i want like my ideal life would be if there's be these type of things build these communities build all over the world and we could travel between them and, and cross pollinate ideas and cross uh, inspire versus getting stuck on one piece of land for 60 years. It, it's a program that we got from our ancestors. That's a stupid program that's, I tried it guys. I've showed you five lands that are all abandoned and I ran from them. So um, Arco Science, anyway, check it out. 80 people living there permanently in these flats with these round windows. Uh, very cool, making bells and running workshops on construction. And they carry on building and maintaining the city just from workshop and construction projects, uh, on construction workshops and bells. Uh, and so the whole city wasn't sponsored with money. It was made with sell of these bells. The entire city was built like that. So also all our ideas that we need big investors, Here's another cool project. Also, Ban sold it. He sold it. Didn't work because it didn't have a community next to it. And community can't work unless you have one belief in the beginning, for the very least. Because if you have Christians and Krishnas and Buddhists all pulling in all different directions, um, it's very hard to start up something. Let me give you a, 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 an example. Buddhists, uh, Buddhists believe that wishes are terrible. Not terrible, but we don't need to have wishes. Uh, it's all like you know. We need to get, get further away from wishes. So, you know, go past them. I believe that the wish is the anti-matter that creates matter. We need the wishes because the wishes is what's creating our reality. And imagine if I'm trying to create a community with a Buddhist. Sure, no problem. When we have like 500 people, when we can have Buddhists and we can have other people, no problem. I'm not trying to alienate. But in the beginning, when you're starting to form something, it's good to have at least one belief because it's something one that you can settle on. And if it's one belief on one God, it's just something that can help us move. Uh, like this guy, he built this amazing conference center called Solar Living Institute. Google it. Solar Living Institute in Oregon. I was there for in person. Also sold it. Didn't, didn't work. Like they had everything there. A conference center made of straw bale, these arched win windows, spirals, uh, good sculptures. And they sold it. It didn't work. Um, uh, also... Look at what materials can be found because uh, it says bamboo. I mean, obviously it's very big. It's like a stadium, but but still, you know, look at what materials can be built. If you don't have bamboo, here's a timber. Um, maybe you have a lot of timber around. Maybe you could uh, get a, a, a chain, a, a sawmill. Uh, they're not expensive, second-hand sawmill that you can sawmill. If you like that idea to like, 
you know, if you have a lot of timber. So don't, don't be attached as to what um, what we need. Michael Rice, architect, uh, uh, Zen Zen Arc. Uh, anyway, Michael Rice did these d designs. Very cool. Um, yeah, there's that. That's a sandbag water tank that I didn't show you. That worked. Fourteen thousand liters it kept. Um, yeah. So uh, there's so much you can do with the ferrous cement. That's my pictures in Mexico. Um, but it's tricky. It's like you got to fuss with it. But if you're creating a public space that you're going to have loads of people coming through, then it's worth your while. If you're doing your home, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like this guy's called the Google of Timorlandia. Tim Timorlandia in Mexico, San Miguel de Allende. I, I was there, I studied with the guy who built all of this. Um, yeah, it's empty, just all empty. Just this guy made this, the rich guy just made this like Disneyland and nobody's there, it's all dead. Um, you know, so again, it's like our egos think that when we build this, then we're going to be happy. No, it doesn't work like that. The happiness first, then everything else. Obviously, technology was 3D printers coming through. Um, that's you've all seen. I'm not going to go into the, but they just built, printed with clay just clay um yeah obviously it needs to be waterproofed i don't know i don't know much about this but uh um that's new technology this guys in texas are working out one printer can build four homes it's incredible what this printer can do this head stays stable on such a long arm even in the wind um yeah this is where i'm going uh, i'm going towards pieces that can be put together over formwork, printed in uh, in a warehouse out of clay, baked, baked, but the energy from all that heat, I'm going to be channeling into huge thermal mass and launching type of Eden projects up here in Russia that will be connected to a kiln, if that makes sense. The kiln is a double kiln. Also, if you remind me, it's a double kiln in Mexico that I learned. When you burn bricks in one thing, the fire goes through to the second thing, the, the exit, the chimney. It goes through underneath the ground and heats up the second kiln. So, And then it exits from there. So when you uh, when you finish burning one, your second one is already preheated, if you know, and, it's, and, then, you, and then does the other process. So you basically, usually one kiln just sends all that hot air up to the top. But I want to create a kiln like that that also sends the excess heat, like put the whole kiln in the ground, for example, yeah? Uh, and 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 heat up like thousands of tons of earth <laughs> that are insulated and around and underneath yeah um insulation underneath is very important maybe in your climate you don't need you need to check the temperature the mean the average temperature of the ground in your in your area and the average temperature is the all the pluses in summer and all the minuses in winter gets your average temperature and that's the temperature of your ground yeah or you can dig you you can get all that stuff from online by the way and basically like earthships and towels they don't need to insulate underneath the ground that's another mistake i made i thought oh, let me not insulate underneath my ground guys i overwintered in that big arch it was minus 30 Celsius. It was minus 18 Fahrenheit. My feet nearly froze to the ground. It was so cold. And because it's mass, concrete, or Guys, can you just switch off your uh, 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 my microphone? Somebody. Okay, so because I didn't insulate underneath, um, my ground is so cold. It's only four degrees, constantly four. My outside minus 30, but my floor is four, four. I try to heat up the air with gas, propane, <laughs> and electricity, and burning an oven, all three at the same time. And my feet because on the ground just kept on getting cold because mass pulls mass. So my body's mass, so it pulls. Although the air was warm, it was 20 degrees, like perfect celsius but i was cold because the floor is cold so check your climate out somewhere you don't need to insulate somewhere you do need to insulate uh, depends on your ground temperature 
depends what climate you're in. So you really need to check it out. And these are the type of questions that you can have in the future during the course, like, and we'll look at, into it holistically. But, you know, do you have shade? Do you have, how much the temperature of the ground? Uh, what's the water content like? Or if it's a desert or is it like, you know, boggy in St. Petersburg was bog, mud, bog, water level. I could dig a foot underneath and it's just water everywhere. One foot underground is water everywhere. Water tables, one foot underneath my feet. <laughs> so it's like, you know, yeah. Anyway, so that was my Earthship design type of where I was going with uh, using this technology. So we've got, a, again, a quick sketch quick sketch just to see it it's like an hour quick you'll you'll learn how to do this and so, so we have a geodesic we have a first gl glazing yeah uh, second glazing is that geodesic bubble and third glazing is uh, these this greenhouse type of thing again it's buried and uh but again it's like canada type of minus 50 celsius you know um <clears throat> There's some other methods using cloth, uh, filler block. I send you a video. Please look. There's a video called Strength Through Geometry. Strength Through Geometry. Please look in the group. Check that video out. Highly recommended. Um, Philip Block, because he studied at MIT, and uh, they just looked at old cathedrals, and they figured out how to get very thin material to stand strong. Um, super thin. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where I'm going with these bricks is using augmented reality um, glasses to see where to put the bricks for the vaults, obviously not for the benches. You can see he's bending and then, uh, so these are technologies we can use. The program is called Fologram. So if anybody wants to connect with me and develop that further, uh, it will, I'll be more than uh, excited to, to look into that Fologram with uh, Microsoft glasses, because to build things like that, you need to be a master. Like these guys, Gustavino, uh, there he is standing there. Yeah, uh, Gustavino, he built a thousand buildings in America, making a million bricks a year, every year, uh, about a hundred years ago. And um, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing. Uh, and these are self-supporting. There's a whole train station in New York on top of this. And this is all self-supporting. So strength through geometry is really, really cool. But to build all of this, you need to be a master. Um, and uh, that's why I'm thinking to work with teenagers and to work with technology to get them excited about how to where to put the bricks and they get placed with fast drying um, plaster Paris type of mortar. Very fast drying. That's how they get pulled. So you literally stick a brick and it stays there. So that's just, I'm just opening your mind about, about technologies. But... Until we have all of that, we need reality. And I like reality checks. This is what we have for a vault. This is the best technology for a vault that I've seen if you don't have any experience. If you have cool brick layers from Mexico near you, of course, go for it. Or you know how to make um, what those African vaults from bricks. What are they called? I don't even remember anymore. It doesn't matter. But here, look at this. A formwork. Uh, a formwork that's made with rebar. Uh, it's made once, okay. Mm, uh, it's got these metal sheets, yeah. Uh, it's collapsible, and you connect one mesh. If you remember that ferro cement, I just, how many meshes there were there? There were chicken wire. There was this mesh, there was that mesh, there was rebar. It's just crazy. Too much work. Here, you use one mesh, and you put these wooden blocks that are spaced, what, two inches, five centimeters, and you pour four inches of earth, and there's your mesh in the middle, sandwiched. And in one day, you have a roof. This is classic. I, 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 this is really, really cool. I really want you to just suck that in. Um, and, and on top of it, they used a very weak mix Okay, because generally ferro cement is one to two. Okay, one part cement, two part sand, which makes it quite costly. These guys, this is Cal Earth. This is California Institute of Land, Art, and Architecture. Nader Khalili, the man behind it. And this is his design. They used one to five. One part sand, uh, cement and five parts sand that they got from under their feet in Joshua Tree, I believe. Yeah, Joshua Tree, California. Um very cool method. Uh, these four pipes is just to hold the, the earth there. They imprinted, you can see, yeah? The four plumbing pipes. Okay. 
And I'll send you the quick design into the group. Maybe I already have, but if I haven't, I'll send it to you the front view of this from Nadir Khalili. So you can see how it's is done. Um, three volts, also very elegant. One volt in the front. We're looking at this picture. One volt in the front and two next to each other. Very elegant. Very, very elegant. Very simple. Very simple. Very cool um, design and simple, guys. Simple. This is buildable stuff. This is very buildable. This is, you know, some of these ideas I was showing you, they're too, too crazy. That's why I want to simplify it now. This design that I was showing you, um, it's all going to be based on this type of technology. All these uh, uh, trapezoid shapes, this dotted line, this dotted line, these are the roofs. They're all the same formwork. They're all the same formwork as per that previous shape that I showed you. Uh, rainbows in our designs, very cool. Uh, Peter Erkstein. Erkstein uh, makes giant rainbows from in America. Uh Josh Kearns, uh, uh, sorry, Josh Jevons, uh, water wizard, um, takes toxic water in rivers, changes them to living water with plants and floating wetlands. Highly recommended um, research in uh, water machines. Okay, so any questions to up until now, so we can have this live dialogue. Thanks, Jay. Follogram. I, I'm not checking the chat. So, uh, Nubian Volts. Thank you. Thanks. That's John Todd. Nub Nubian Volts is in Africa. Research them. Super low cost volts made with bricks. Follogram we found. Uh huh. Okay. What else? We're purchased by a cannabis company. Who? Hopland. Oh. Purchased by cannabis come yeah yeah hopland california that's the solar living institute yeah uh, by the way the hemp cre hempcrete is amazing material i'm gonna say it again hempcrete is amazing material because instead of cement which cement pulls energy out of us okay there is another thing on materials like cement if you build a freshly cemented home you'll feel like you, your energy, it just pulls out of you because as it's drying and curing, it's just, it's better not to be around it, but it cures for years, but especially first 30 days. But in our sandbags, we only use 8%. So that's like we get away, mostly earth. So stabilized earth and cement home. Cement is like one to two, one to two and a half. Um, hempcrete is lime and um, hemp which makes it a living material that's very, very warm. So um, if you can find a, a recipe and you can find a recipe, it's all online and you can get uh, that stuff. Again, play around with it. Maybe make something small, you know, make a model of your home, uh, maybe 3D print your home, uh, but make a, make a paper clay model for all you care. You know, don't get too, like make little sausages from clay, and, and and make clay model of the home. Like in this clay model that I designed for my home, I saw um, that the top parts of my roof were collapsing with little sausages sandbags. And uh, yeah, clay models are very cool uh, because you get out of your head and you get out into, into real life scenario. But what questions do you have up until now? Maybe... Um, The liner is ETFE, not ETEF, ETFE liner. Whoever is interested. You can you can speak up. You don't, you don't need to type anything. Just uh, there's uh, a e ETFE. Okay. Yeah, it's in the chat. Mm -hmm. So is there um um. Someone we need to download. I think you mentioned, uh, uh, was that 3D uh, program? Okay. Yeah, let, let, let me brief you on, on, the, on the course quickly so you guys at least get the, the, that, that sorted out. Okay. Um, basically, we only need it in like week three. We're going to be doing a bit of paperwork now. Um, let me show you. So it's all there. Uh, so if you log into the course and whoever doesn't have the login details, just send me an, 
send me a, a message in Telegram and I'll sort you out, but you should all have it. Um, so you go into courses, uh, uh, 2D, 3D drawing course, uh, theory and design inspirations. So um, that's just some lessons for you. You can watch them anytime. You'll have the course forever. I keep on paying for Vimeo where all the videos are loaded and every year I keep on paying for it. So, you know, I'm... You know, if you want to ever throw a donation, you're welcome to, but I just keep it open, whatever. Um, so that's mechanics of Wotelarium. Wotelarium is this this home that I've been designing all this time, all this time. Uh, um, principles of biological design. It's just some other theory, like uh, you can watch this videos, studying colors, blueprints. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to overload you. Just watch it in your own time. But how our course, our drawing course will roll, that's the lesson you want to, not a lesson, but you need to look into this, okay? So there is a theory, 2D, 3D, yeah? There is the 12 weeks. I'm going to, in second week, which is next week, I'm going to give you a, 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 a vast to, like, a vast to lesson, okay? I'm going to summarize it and give you, like, the most important stuff because it's an 80, it was an 80-hour course, and uh, obviously, I'll give you just the ju the, the main thing from Vastu is basic to know that you have a center of your home. From that center goes north, east, west, south. How to find the center? The easiest way to find the center, you can get a shape of your home exact and you can put a needle <laughs> and a paper cutout where it's balanced sitting. Uh, that's the center of your home. Yeah. Like weight wise. Yeah. And then from that, you have north, east, west, south. You have north, east, north, uh, uh, southeast, and blah, blah, blah. The most important thing is that on those axes, axes, you can't have like a freaking toilet. You can't have like a pile up of rubbish, like a rubbish bin or dump, or like a jam of like a room with all the stuff. Like, for example, like east axis, that's where. Uh, your energy of your uh, realization into society comes in your work uh, your you know if you have rubbish on this east axis on the axis it's like bad news so those axes are very important to look after but we'll do a separate vast lesson in week two i don't want to overload you let's get back to your, to your answer um bread okay so first week we basically meet and greet uh, release theory one two three four, uh, uh, that's the theory I, I showed you where to find it and uh, lesson 4A and 4C, basic, I'll show you just now. They are the drawing. Uh, top view, okay? And uh, lesson 5, uh, side view, okay? I'll show you where they're now. You need to have graph paper and you can glue them together. We'll, we'll check it out right now, okay? So... Basically, the entire 12 week are rolled out. What you need for the course the materials are also here. Okay. My telegram is here if you need. There's the pictures of the tools I use. Uh, you don't need to have all these pencils and pens. That's if you like want to, you know, you've seen what I've done with all those pencils and pens. The pens line, uh, do the edges of the pencil work, by the way. Yeah. Uh, this little guy, it, it's um, for the maps they use it. So I can take any curve. I can take any curve. That's how I get this my polycarbonate to six meters because I go according to the, you, you know what I mean? You roll it and there is a little roller in the end, that little thing. Yeah. And then basically rolls it. But you can also have a bendy ruler. If you don't have a bendy ruler, you can cut a piece of millimeter paper. <laughs> so you can, you know what I mean? You can get away with lots of things. Somebody even didn't have a, um, you know, some tool and he just glued uh, put two two pens next to each other and put a, a pencil across so you can be creative so so what whatever but let's look at like week one the most important thing to to see right now is um that uh, if you go into 2d part uh or to, to yeah so we're going to start with the 2d basically drawing this home on paper okay so you go into this drawing with pencil, compass, and a ruler. Okay. And uh, it's very important that I teach you how to draw this on paper because 
people think that you just you know you can grow go on uh uh straight on the computer you can't you're gonna you're gonna mess around you're gonna make a lot of mistakes like the in brazil i messed up because i didn't have the slice through the middle of the vault in the middle of the dome to see that the dome is leaning onto aircrete that's why i had to lift the vault up so it didn't lean anymore so there's a lesson so there is a nice and easy start top view this was from a zoom call which i did with the with with like guys like yourself and uh and yeah basically you know in the zoom i, I draw it up again again because the first lesson is this one one hour 42. make a sec another nugget lower so so this is i drew it for them for who didn't understand but the lesson itself is this one drawing the two top, top plan view nice and easy start maybe you'll you'll be able to shoot it straight away from this one if you want but the lesson itself is um because you see behind the tracing paper is this design you know behind it yeah that, that this is the one one hour 42. so basically we start from scratch uh, uh i show you scale i glue some paper together um some sheets of paper i, I join them together so we really start from scratch and um yeah Uh, so so that's that, that's the one thing we have to do and there is a refinement to the top view i think i do some refinements i don't even remember anymore uh, uh, oh yeah i do a geodesic on the window so it's anyway it's all there that that that's the first thing you need to do you need to draw a top view okay um the, during this week okay and the second thing you need to do uh, is um because it's a practical course the theory you can watch anytime you want we're doing practice. I'm um, for 12 weeks here I'm going to be assisting you and keeping the energy going. Um, as long as you stay in the course. I I'll be here until the last man is standing. Okay. <laughs> if you guys all fall out, I pass. You know what I mean? But it's all here, and I'm here with the answers. I'm here to support you. Also, if you're stuck on something, especially with Rhino, you message in Telegram. If you see I'm not answering, you message me in person. Okay. If you still see I'm not answering, you call me. Okay, you have that right, but do that three step. Uh, send in the group. The my group, the group is pinned for me, so I see all the messages straight away. If I don't answer you within like, because I don't want you to get stuck and wait for a week until Saturday for me to assist you. I'm here on call for you. Okay, anyway, that's Rhino. We're not talking about Rhino for now. Forget about Rhino. Paper. This is a side view. Again, one hour thirty minutes. Um, yeah, basically, we we'll take that top view that you'll draw. And then from the top view, we're going to be very logical. We're going to be basically getting the the um, the side view of the the slice. The, you know the slice that I said I didn't do in Brazil. <laughs> we're going to be doing that slice right now. And obviously, the home that you build doesn't have to be this. It's just showing you a bit of how I go about the design. Okay, so that's the second lesson. So that's the two lessons you have to do uh, during this week. Uh, um, and then um yeah and that's it that's it then then we'll do um uh, during second week we'll do lesson seven and eight and third week we'll do nine ten and eleven and then by the time of third week is finished we're done with all paperwork and then we roll onto 3d and 3d is packed the whole as i said the whole course is done it's loaded and it's uh I don't want to load you with 3D now. Just don't even fast. But for 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 those who are very interested, I'll just give you a glance. Modeling. There's 19 lessons. There is seven weeks left, or what? No, there's nine weeks left. Uh, so there's two lessons per week. Boom. Two lessons. Two lessons. Two lessons. Two lessons. And we'll basically like really start from scratch. They will take that um, foundation that not you did i'll give you a new one that i did because mine is the correct one and even if you made mistakes you don't need to worry about it but we'll basically take that and we'll draw it up on in in 3d um and there's there's the you know my lesson there's a light there's a first live support session for people who couldn't get it like the zoom calls that i'll be supporting you with there's a second live sessions with people who didn't get it and there's a third live support session 
<laughs> and there is a fourth one. So yeah, basically, anyway, I don't want to load you with Rhino, but it's all there and we'll draw this home from start to finish in 3D. And by the time you've done that, you'll, you can draw yourself anything you want, anything you want um, in, in Rhino. Any any other questions? But if you have any just questions, just speak up. I mean, we can, you know, yeah. If you don't, then uh, what else? I just want. I just yeah. want to speak up to say that uh, I'm very excited. I I think I have a lot of questions. I just assume that they will naturally be answered in the course. I have a lot of questions, but I think they're gonna be answered. <laughs> but but just shoot. Maybe you got a question now that you that you like. Uh, maybe just something that comes up from your heart. Maybe yeah. The 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 safety of the materials is that like I, I guess what we can discuss it on the saturdays right like what's the more organic materials things like that you know things that are uh, uh, carcinogenic very, very good question very good question uh, so something in vast i learned which i didn't know wood gives off energy and after 30 for 50 years wood is dead when wood is dead energetically it starts to pull energy from people straw bale straw is very good again this is what i learned and i resonate with it so but you need to have your own resonance with what you feel and 50 years is a long time <laughs> straw on the other hand has got a lot of energy but the more fine it is the more it gives off energy faster so straw like i was in a sauna the other day and i had straw bale in the room and it was just so nice to breathe this fresh straw in the in the relaxing room of the sauna and it gives this nice um, therapeutic uh, aroma therapy type of smell. But two years later, three, four years later, the straw bale is dead, uh, dead energetically. If you plaster it, it's there behind the plaster, but it's still dead energetically. That's talking about even natural materials. Um, you know, uh, so what I'm trying to say, I don't think I'd build myself a home from straw bale that I want to be living in for 30 years. But 30 years is also questionable because <laughs> we think that we're going to be there somewhere forever, but, you know, it hasn't happened for me seven times over. Um, Acrete is a great material to build with, easy, easy to cut, but fucking toxic. Uh, not toxic like when, when you, all the dust, when you're cutting it, two of my dogs got sick after the workshop. The dust, they were smelling it. And both were coughing for 30 days. They're still alive, all fine. Well, not alive anymore, but I mean, they, they, they got fine. They got well after 30 days, but they both got sick smelling the acrete dust. So that's just, you know, because it's foam, but that's our acrete. Sodium lauryl sulfate, uh, a little bit of glycerin <laughs> and uh, cement and this, uh, and, and the, you know, the foam itself that's from sodium lauryl sulfate. So I didn't feel bad in the dome living myself when it was, it was all plastered, of course. It was plastered and you can do natural plaster over it, a thick coat of natural plaster, for example. And that acts as a filter for all this, uh, you know, like acrete. So it, 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 it's okay. But when we were building the dust, you know, masks are very good. You don't want to breathe that stuff when you're cutting the bricks you cut you start cutting the bricks when you get to the top because the bricks start to be tapered you know um ferro cement as i said uh, look i was in a ferro cement room that was built next to a rock i haven't felt an energy so sacred and so beautiful like in that room but i don't know if it was the rock or the 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 ferro cement thing that was next to it but like I didn't feel bad. But when when you cement itself, when it's curing, it definitely pulls energy. It pulls moisture out of our bodies. Literally dries us up. So you know maybe something that you can let settle for for a few things. For um, at the same time, we're all unique. So maybe 
go and stay in a dome, for example, like an acre dome. There's lots of those Airbnbs and just sleep a night and see how you feel. Connect, do a meditation there. Walk next to the material with your heart chakra. Just take an acre brick and put it right here and just close your eyes. I do the test in the shop with food. Like uh, I just put there, is it there for me? And I ask a question and you'll either get this closing feeling or you'll get this opening feeling. Your heart just, just tells you like intuition. Uh, yeah, if you put a brick next to your heart. So so you also got to look at your budget, but th at the same time, because the clay bricks are the best, but they're costly, you know what I mean? Mm, anything you can build from acrete, you can build uh, acrete brick, you can build from any brick. Um, obviously mud bricks are awesome, but then mud bricks, they're like cheap and awesome. You know, if you make your own mud bricks, like Nubian vaults, if you look at, um, but then you need to waterproof them properly. Make sure that you have like a roof that uh, they don't, because they just run when the water comes there, they just, just turn, you know, um, uh, they get soft. I think start off with, you know, what's in your area um do some research but yeah do some research uh like i'd build myself an air grid from bought air grid bricks and i'd do a natural plaster on the inside i don't think it would be a problem um obviously hemp grid is is great but also look at the cost maybe what you can do is maybe the first room that you build yourself like a nice vault that you can just get in and uh, maybe you can just build it from like anything that comes in handy that you can at least have a quick space. Like for example, if you're renting in a high cost and you like just really want to get onto the land, maybe it's worthwhile building like from acrete. And once you're on the land and you have timber around and you can get into the whole sawmill story and, or getting timber in, obviously timber is really, really cool. But then in some countries, you have to treat it with chemicals. We have a, like in hot countries, you have a lot of bugs. Then some treat it with uh, uh, terrible chemicals that make wood not so pleasant. In my country, I don't have those bugs. I don't have to treat wood for those bugs. I can just do um, a copper, copper type of water. Copper, I don't know what it's called. But yeah, it's like a bluish color. Um, and... Um, I also don't want to live in a chemical thing. I don't know if that answers your question, but there's so many materials. You've got to be like more specific and do some research. There's a million materials. But obviously, hempcrete is incredible, like really incredible. Uh, so if you can get your hands on that, yeah. But look at what you have and be more specific. I, don't, I can't go through all the materials. You know, there's so many of them. I don't even know where to start. But they're just a little bit on that. A anyone else? Uh, what about like just making the foundation itself or, you know, whatever building material you use? Because I know there's, you kind of got into it a little bit with your pre presentation, but uh, are the, you going to kind of address that? Like, you know, you, yeah. you talked about like the best foundation, insulate. the best foundation that I would do is rammed earth tires that's where i'd use earthship method i'd use two courses okay. of two courses of rammed earth tires those ones from pickup those bigger ones yeah, yeah. The one goes that's in the sure. ground the one that goes in the ground was a plastic sheet inside the plastic sheet obviously sits inside the room and you pound all that sand in and by the way, my friend Daryl has a tool he made. He showed it in Alumni Group. If you go to Alumni Group through all the pictures, you'll you'll see the tool in the, one of the videos. He just pulls up the tire like that. <laughs> and he just puts in three wheelbarrows of soil one time. And then he releases the tool and it's very little pounding needed. So even tires, he got ah. to prime. Yeah, Daryl. So you can find him. But it's there. The tool is there in the Alumni Group. You can definitely find it. It's like four things. Okay. Um, so two oh, nice. courses, two courses of tires for foundation. I, I I don't think there is a better and cheaper foundation than that. Um, you know, okay. obviously talking about like not spending too much money on the, this thing. Uh, I would do from that because on top of that you can either connect timber, 
which you can look at the Earthship. If you look at Eric of Grid Guru channel, of Grid Guru, he's got an entire Earthship build, and you can see it for for free how oh, wow. how they can connect a timber to to the tire to you make a beam on top of the tires, and in that beam you put uh, threaded rods, and the threaded rods basically connect the with with uh, uh, nuts of uh, the timber. Yeah, that has to be treated. That has to be really well treated be between the two, um, and it has to have a water water break. But you can check all of that out. So that's a, for foundation. That's that's the only foundation that I would do. But there's a million foundations, uh, you know, um, insulated, not insulated. That's uh, you got to research your climate. Um, mm -hmm. Building in Africa, no. <laughs> building in Canada, yeah. yeah. Uh, building in uh, building uh, in Taos, yes. From the sides, building in Canada, yes, from sides and underneath. So, yeah. Look at what builders are doing in your area, but you can do it cheaper by using those methods like 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 the tire, for example, if we're just talking about foundation. It's really, really strong, really, really strong. And there's no cement there. So also if you have like code, code type of problems that people like some areas are like you have to have, you know, building that doesn't use cement. Sure. Here's a foundation that doesn't use cement, but it's as strong as any foundation made of concrete. Even better because it's slightly mm -hmm. armored. So if you have earthquake, that that, that right. very good, very very good. Tried and tested. Okay. Fifty years. Okay. On. I gotta see that alternative to uh, pounding tires with a hammer because I've done that and <laughs> it's just. It's a good yeah. exercise, but you know, it's just... me too. I've done three courses and I nearly died. It's I could do only five, <laughs> five tires a day, but was that tool from Daryl? And and one more thing, uh, a compressor, good compressor with um hydraulic arm that comes out. What is that thing called? Yeah. The hydraulic arm that comes out. It's like. <laughs> Um, not a jackhammer not a jackhammer it's like a, a cylinder and it has a, a thing with like a nugget at the end like this size and it just pounds <laughs> it's like the size of my arm you get them bigger smaller ah we'll research we'll research but they connect to yeah. computer and they you, you you hold it like this and it just hammers away <laughs> amazing for rammed earth amazing for rammed earth all right Cool. <laughs> yeah. So if you uh, compactor, yeah, it's a form of compactor, but uh, uh, we need to just just search it. It's a hydraulic compactor. Um, I mean, I don't want to go into or Google now, but we'll we'll find it. And if if you get to it, you can send me pictures of that because I know what it looks like. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's very that that's also usable for uh, Earthships. Also use it. Um, yeah, and that tool of Daryl is just key. I would, I, I would definitely order that next time from a from a weld shop, or if I have a weld that you know, I want welded myself. You, you don't have to do everything yourself. There is something that you're good at, and there's something that other people are good at. Like I'll weld for hours, and I'll make a crappy thing, but somebody will do it, and what you know what I mean. So, although we want to do everything, we don't have to do everything. We can just do what we love, and that's the only criteria. Do what you love. If you don't want to love, if you don't do what you love, then I could walk out after a meeting after five minutes if the if a person I'm speaking to is not I'm not resonating with him and I'm feeling like I'm getting lower, lower, lower. I just walk out of the meeting, um, even if I drove there for two hours. So anyway, it's a different approach, but that's how I, I'd never betray myself anymore. And by not betraying myself anymore, I keep on raising this vibration. And when I raise this vibration. Everything happens, but that's a separate conversation for Sundays. <laughs> Sundays because you you guys are in a different time zone, and um, I'll do that eight same time, and then Americans can be present. And be, the reason it's on Sunday is because Saturdays are taken up with you guys, with your class, with our class. That's why I'm moving the, those conversations about uh, Christ consciousness to Sundays. <clears throat> okay. Okay, cool. So, if there's no more questions, uh, you can send to the to the group, 
Um, otherwise, you you should have all access and you just roll with it. Just go for it. Just just do the top view and side view. Easy going. It should should be all there. It's it is all there. If you try, and if I see you trying, then I'll help you. If you haven't tried, like I'll I'll see it immediately because I'll ask you to show me what you're doing. And you know, I'm not gonna hold your hand if you're not trying. Pneumatic temper, thank you. And there's different sizes. Okay, guys. Then we'll see you all there. If you, if anybody is here who is not on the course, you're welcome to join us for next week as well. Um, and um, if you want to uh, do a donation, I'm always open. Uh, that's what helps me to carry on um, thriving <laughs> and living life. And uh, yeah, all good. Otherwise, you can join the course. Uh, same time every week, eight o'clock. Yeah, my time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know it's a bit random and all over, but I hope it's just stretching your consciousness too a bit further because I wish I knew all these things when, uh, uh, when I thought that, you know, getting land or Anastasia or one hectare <laughs> is going to save me. Like, yeah, I'm not a farmer. I don't need a hectare anymore. In fact, I don't want to build anything except a a a, 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 a public space for children. I, I want to play, make a play space for children, like a, where they can cooperate with nature and learn from nature. I don't even want to build homes anymore. I don't want to build a home for a rich. I don't want to get stuck building a home for a rich guy that's going to close it behind his fence, like Timolandia. So, so yeah. Anyway, I love you and thank you for supporting and thank you for being on the training with me. Thank, Thank you. Friends. Okay. Thank you, you Alasha. All right. Bye. Yeah, many thanks. Yeah.